All right, so I want to make this video because in the self-employed artist freelance world, it's always about how do I make money? How do I get clients? You know, what rate should I charge? It's rarely talked about how do I manage my money? How do I maintain my money? And how do I live off my money? So that's a topic I've been very passionate about because since I started my self-employed journey, I was horrible with money. I knew how to make it, but I didn't know how to manage it at all. So I want to give you some personal tips that might help you in your journey as well. First, a little bit about myself. So I studied illustration design for six years. And what really shocked me was that there were no finance classes for bachelor students. Those were safe for the master students, but I feel like finances is one of the most important things you should learn when you start becoming self-employed. You know, what's the point of being the greatest and best artist if you have no idea how to manage or make money? At some point in school, I had to become self-employed because I had no money left to study. So I needed some source of income and I became a self-employed artist. And by the time tax season came, I was completely overwhelmed with all the paperwork, all the numbers. So I hired a random tax advisor, you know, just to take care of all my paperwork, all my taxes and tax returns. And that's my first tip for you. Hire a reliable tax advisor. They will give you a complete peace of mind when it comes to all the numbers and taxes. You know, you can completely focus on your work, on your art, you know, and sometimes they know about loopholes that normal people like you and me have no idea about. So that can really help as well. Um, make sure you find a good tax advisor because my first tax advisor didn't communicate with me. She never told me that I had to set money aside for taxes. I thought that all the money I received from my clients was all that I could use. And that is very dangerous. So at some point I hired a second tax advisor and he told me to set money aside for taxes and I didn't understand. It was like, what? I have to pay taxes on what I <laughs> on what I earn? And he said, well, yes, unless you wanna go to jail. If I didn't find out sooner, my financial situation would be a complete mess right now, which is also my tip number two. From all the income that you make, set 30% aside for taxes. All right, this might sound self-explanatory for the majority of people, but as you saw in my example, some people still don't do that. You know, and once tax season comes, uh, you're completely screwed. So why 30%? Now, every country has different tax rules and each income will get taxed differently. Uh, but for the majority of people, a good rule of thumb is 30%. It is very difficult to track the exact amount you have to pay on taxes. So that's why it's so important to be a bit more conservative with the numbers. So in case you have to pay a bit more, you have a little bit of a buffer. All right, the next tip I have is probably the biggest of all, and that is budgeting. So for self-employed or freelance artists, our income can fluctuate a lot. We usually don't have a steady income. So how do you budget? If you're thinking about becoming self-employed, first, make sure you know what you need to survive. That means everything from rent, food, utilities like your internet, water, electricity, groceries, and your savings. Basically everything, even toilet paper. So first write down what you need on a monthly basis. Post tax, once you have that number, we can start budgeting. There's many budgeting techniques, but one that I personally use myself is called the 50, 30, 20 rule. All right, so what does it mean? 50 means 50% 50 of your post-tax income goes into your needs. 30% goes into your wants and 20% goes into savings. So rent is probably your biggest expense. You want to keep it as small as possible. But a good rule of thumb is to have your rent never exceed more than 30% of your post-tax income. So now that we know how much we need on a monthly basis to survive, you can then calculate what you need as your hourly Rate. So for the sake of the video, I will take the average annual living wage in the US per single person, which is 57,200 US dollars. And let's say you work 40 hours a week. That means your hourly rate should be 27.5 US dollars. If you don't hit the amount you need to survive, first consider a side job that will pay the bills consistently. 
and then you do your freelance business on the side until you're successful enough to be self-employed on a full-time basis. All right, tip number four. So once we established our budget and needed income, we should focus on building an emergency fund next. As the name implies, this chunk of money should only be dedicated for emergencies. You know, let's say your appliances break, you need to buy a new fridge. That's what the emergency fund is for. So depending on your current situation, you should aim to save around three to six months of your post-tax income. Based on the previous average living wage in the US of 3,300 US dollars per month, that would be an emergency fund of roughly 20,000 US dollars, which should cover an emergency of six months. So $20,000 might sound crazy, but especially for self-employed people, you know, worst case scenario, you can't work, you have no clients to work for, you have that emergency fund you can rely on. If you have to use that emergency fund, your next goal is to refill that emergency fund. So it never stays empty and is always available. So that's why it's called an emergency fund because you never know when the next emergency will come. In case you're wondering where you should keep that emergency fund, I would recommend to leave it in a high yield savings account. So what's a high yield savings account? A high yield savings account is a deposit account where the interest is higher than a traditional savings account. So something like a 2.5 annual percentage yield or APY is considered high yield. Obviously the higher interest you get on your money, the better. There are different banks in every country, so I can't really recommend one bank that works for everyone. So I would suggest to do some research in your country and see which bank gives you the highest APY on your money. So what I heard in the US is the SoFi bank is quite good. It gives you 4.6% annually on your money. So, you know, just by having your money sit in that account, it will generate 4.6% annually. Because I don't live in the US and the bank that I found in my country works the best for me is Trade Republic. That gives me 4% on my money. So let's say you have a thousand bucks in your account after one year you will generate forty dollars just by having the money sit in that account all right my final tip might sound a bit scary to some but it's so crucial if you want to maintain a comfortable life in the future so once we have established everything we talked about before you want your money to make more money. Again, I'm not a financial advisor this is something I've been very passionate about in the past year and I've done a lot of research that works for me. So I just wanna share with you what I'm doing. So this process is very slow, but if you start early on, you will basically be set for life. Remember the 20% we have in our savings from the 50, 30, 20 rule. So these 20% go into savings. You want to take that money and invest it. So I've never thought about investing my money as well. I always thought it's something rich people did, but it's something everyone should do. I don't want to go into much detail on how to invest that money because everyone has their preference how and what they want to invest it in, you know, real estate, stocks, and all that stuff. I personally have my money in index funds that I pay in monthly. And by the time I retire, I should be living comfortable. And yeah, but if you don't know where you want to invest that money right now, just leave them in the high yield savings account that we talked about. Let it grow for a bit until you know what you want to invest it in. So these are my five tips for, for basically anyone, you know, whether you're self-employed or you work for a company. I think everyone should start treating their money this way. So let's be financially mature and stop spending our money irresponsibly. Okay, now I just want to answer some questions from the comment sections on YouTube and on Instagram. And let's get into it. So the first question is, how do you know it's worth pursuing a career in art over let's say a science degree? Okay, so personally I never intended to become an artist. I first studied architecture and after a few weeks, I immediately knew it was nothing for me and I dropped out. So I only knew art was the right direction once I dropped out of architecture school. So in my case, I knew that the art direction was the right one because I didn't want to become an architect. If you have the opportunity to experience the science direction first, you might immediately know if that's the right direction or not. 
If not, you could drop out and then pursue your art direction. How do you manage finances as freelancers tend to have irregular payment schedules? That is a difficult question. It is important to have a steady income first. If you don't have a regular income as a freelancer, you should probably first look for a job that pays the bills on a consistent basis. So something like working, you know, for working for a company, working a normal nine to five job, and in your free time, you can focus on freelance gigs and over time until you reach the point where you have enough clients to sustain yourself, then think about switching. The key is to find clients that you can work with on a monthly basis. This will basically become your steady income. Another point is you should diversify your income as well. So in my case, I have enough clients to pay all my bills and every additional client that I get is basically a bonus. Then I have my prints that I'm selling on the side. I have my clothing brand and eventually this YouTube channel might give me some income as well. Do you have some equations or percentages you try to hit when pricing a piece? So I think you're referring to my my art prints. I basically want to distinguish myself from, from all the sites like Society6 or Redbubble that are basically print-on-demand sites. Um, I want my art prints to be more premium. That's why I look at certain artists where I feel like I'm in the same niche and price my paintings accordingly. Interested in your daily rates more or less? I always think it's better to price project-based. The reason why I think project-based is better than hourly-based and specifically Chris Doe talked about this. If you charge hourly instead of project-based, you will get punished for being better. Let me explain what this means. So for example, you need 10 hours for project A. Let's say you charge $50 per hour. Let's say this project takes you 10 hours. That means you gain $500 for finishing this project. Now, let's say you finish this project in five hours, so you're much faster, but because you only work five hours on that project, you gain only half. So you're getting punished for being faster. That's why I think it's much better to charge project-based. You know, in the beginning, it's fine to charge hourly, but at some point you should start charging per project. Yeah, so I don't really have a daily rate that I can give you. It depends on the client, you know, how big the client is, what's the objective, and I give them a project-based rate accordingly. Yep, but that's pretty much it. So if you have any financial questions as freelancers, self-employed or artists, please let me know and I will try to address it in my next videos. Even better, if you have a financial situation that you want me to talk about, let me know and I think it might also help other people. Contact me via email or write a comment down below. All right, and that's it for today. Talk to you soon. Bye.